Good morning everybody. Well today is the culmination of five weeks of looking at the components of the trend intensity indicator and today we're going to bring it all together into the tra trading centre on stock radar so you can see how it all works and how it all makes, all makes sense. I've got my fingers pointing up here today. We're going to use our head rather than our heart. That's what we're going to try and do to generate some profit. So I'm going to talk you through a little bit of what we do and how we do it today. Okay, hi, my name is Richard Lee and I manage the stockradar.com.au website for you. We identify the early stages of a trend, we jump on them and simply follow them high and use our risk management process uh, to protect the trade, either be a, a big profit or a small loss, whichever way we do it. Okay, we're luckily not in the techs at the moment. That's been bouncing around quite widely. We have a resource bias in most of our portfolios, which is good. That's been keeping our market a bit stronger than overseas. This has also been a very bad period since last August for the market. Uh, there have been some stocks holding this market up, but there are a lot of stocks being Polynovo, Nearmap, a lot of smaller ones, Appen, Altim, Megaport, Nanosonics, EML Payments, Bravava Solutions, Kogan have all been absolutely cane, and I want to talk a little bit about why we use stocks and how they can provide prevent you from being in those capital decimating uh, loss situations. The other thing I want, is I want to talk about today, or we'll talk about probably next week, is health stocks. They've all been beaten down badly. There's a great demographic there. And like all stocks, although there's a lot, not a lot of stocks in the stock pick count at the moment, that means there are lots of opportunities that are about to come in. So the cycle goes on and uh, the waves go on and the health stocks certainly uh, are coming down into a nice little area. Uh, we'll be looking for some trend reversals and some, uh, some signals, uh, some breakouts there. Okay, let's get to the markets to start off with. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, we've been a bit of pressure on that one there. Um, it's although it, again it did have a very good night last night. Um, it has been struggling. Here we go. If I can just get all this straightened up here. Okay, so you can see there we've come down to West One. We've held it. We've had a rally last night. Still plenty of red bars here. Plenty of pressure down here. So there's a lot more work to be done than a one night rally in response to the uh, the power of um, interest rate uh, thing last night. So. Um, if we look at the NASDAQ as well, again, it had a huge rally last night, but again, hasn't really put a very much of a dent in what we've been seeing over the last few weeks or months. The pressure is down, it's below the average, volume is high, momentum is weak. This is just a one day rally, so we don't take too much credence on that. At the end of the week, we'll have a look at it and see where we are, but for the moment, uh, we're not that happy with it. Gold has been just range trading, it's come back up its highs again and not doing much. It's just to be stuck in this boring old range which you can't do much with. Uh, Brent crude, still levitating pretty well, had a good night last night. Um, I'm still watching this area for a breakdown because there is a bit of volatility in here which does ha tend to happen at highs. Um, but all market is a unique market, so and the volume's gone right down here. So that's, that's sort of a contradiction in terms. The volume going down means it's probably like a correction. The volatility means it could be a top. So again, a bit of a wild card. All you do is watch your stop. If your stop goes off, out you get. If it doesn't go off, you hang on for the ride. So this this ride may continue on, we'll wait and see. But uh, crude is holding up okay at the moment. Copper also, a bit like gold, just can't do anything at the moment. Came back to West Run pretty quickly, It'll probably go back to Bar One again. At some stage we'll get a resolution to this, but not happening right now. Okay, so let's go to the XJ ASX 200. Which, uh, again, it's, in, it's been in a range since August last year. It got to the top again, it's fallen off again. It's trying on a bit of a rally today in response to the overseas markets. It'll probably, I would think, drift back down to S1 again. And we'll just, I, I really can't tell what's going to happen from here because this is just a range at the moment. So until it breaks out of the range, it's very hard to know. So there's a little bit of life down here, but not a lot. Um, again, it's just sideways for the moment. As I said, the market's been tough since August. A lot of stocks have been caned. Health stocks have been sold off. There's only a few stocks that make sure this stock, this market's holding up, and that'll be to do with some of the resource stocks. Okay, so the the portfolio was flat at 42. There are 39 stocks and three ETFs uh, in there. We've got uh, we cover 167 stocks. So 39 stock picks of 167 stocks and three ETFs of 21 covered. Conservative portfolio is still at 4 out of 20. Like our uh, complete stock radar portfolio of 42 out of 167, it's still pretty light on. 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 in the stock picks. They're our leveraged ones that we really hot focus on the trends that are available. Um, and so we're, we're quick to get in, quick to get out there, but we're fully, um, fully equitized with those things. Our focus on trends and high conviction with mostly resource-based or, resource or related stocks in there. Utilities, energy, property are at the top of the, um, the sector ratings. 
Uh, utilities have been, been inspired lately with the stocks we covered, all the stocks we covered going up, so that's been pretty good. So stocks last week, we looked at BHP still rotating, CSR is banging on the door of that resistance, Endeavour's looking quite good, it's sort of levitating, it's going okay. Uh, APA, which is one uh, I want to talk about a little bit again this week, because it's an interesting stock, and we're going, it's about looking at buyers and sellers here. And when I look at this here, we see APA, you know, the turnaround from a few months ago when we, we had this big base of support down here, okay, it then rallied off there. It was, it was holding under here quite a bit. So until this was broken, we really still had this, you know, struggling sort of tentative sort of pattern happening. And all of a sudden, we have got through this level here uh, uh, and it all of a sudden went bang. Volume went up. The prices have been going up each week closing on their highs, momentum's been fantastic, and even the last two two weeks, last week it came down but finished back on its high, and this week it's come back down again, and it's probably going to finish toward near its high, if it can do again tomorrow, but it's a very, very good sign of demand on this stock, and that's where your probabilities, you get a very good comfort level on your probabilities in a stock like this, because you've got a trend intensity rating of 10, Volume, moving average, price, momentum, all saying the same thing, the price is going up. The only thing we want to see go is R1. When R1 goes, we'll be much happier and we might see another another spring forth uh, from there if that goes on. So, um, oh, sorry about that. So that's um, APA and how it looks at the moment. So I'm a bit tent to touch this thing here sometimes. Okay, so that's APA. What I want to go through there just briefly from last week. Okay, Challenger. Is a new stock this week that I'm looking at. Um, it's been a very slow burn, a bit like Wally Parsons. Uh, sorry, Wally, they should call it these days. Um, it's just been the last two years, it's been generating this slower, slower, slow, a grind of higher, higher lows against this resistance point of higher highs. Okay, so that's really my trigger level, and we're just starting to push through that this week. Uh, probably up a bit again today, but we've got a trend intensity rating of plus three. It's primed and ready to confirm a reversal here. It's a bit hard to see the volume there because it's all been squeezed down a bit, but I can push it up a little bit for you. So you can see we've got a bit of volume here on this last little kick up here, more volume here. Momentum starting to turn positive. It's above the average. Things are coming together. We're getting that alignment of the stars that we want to see. And, and uh, when it coincides with the price reversal, that's a really good sign there. So um, just got here, reducing the complex myriad of fundamentals to a clear, simple and structured decision making process. You can go through all sorts of models of fundamental analysis, analysing your business. It really won't tell you what the price is going to do, though, unfortunately. So uh, we reduce all those com uh, all those myriad of fundamentals, all reduced to what we think and what we're doing in buying and selling. Money on the line. That's how we evaluate it, and that's what Challenger is telling us. So finally, we might see a move on Challenger. Okay, now talk a little bit about the stocks that have been decimated of late. And I just want to talk a little bit about TPW because it's one of those stocks that did get uh, beaten up quite a bit. Um, you know, it had this big, huge run from, you know, a dollar right up to $14. It could do, do no wrong. A lot of those stocks were doing it at the time. It got up here, it came back, it rallied again, it rallied again, and three times it failed at this level here. So disregarding everything we know outside it, just looking at the price, you can see here there's been a resistance three times here. If it breaks, I'm a buyer. If not, I'm, I'm hold off. Then here, if, I, if I was a buyer at this stock, if I had been in this stock here, I still would have had a 15% have a stop off those highs here. Because any stock that comes off 15%, I've got to get out of because the potential is that this might happen now. Temple and Webster has gone from uh, $14 to it's now $5 and falling. Um, so people were prepared to buy up here at $14, quite happy with the valuation of the stock, very high PE, but people were quite happy to buy it. Then all of a sudden, people aren't happy about buying it when it's been cut by 50% and more. Okay, now that's the mindset of the market. So we've got to try and look at the market realistically because there'll be a great buying opportunity on this one because Temple and Webster is a good stock. They run a good stock client service business. So <coughs> what I'm saying here is, <laughs> TPW was in very excessive valuation stage. With momentum, we can hang on to it, but there's always the risk that it is going to come back and adjust those valuations. So at that point, we were very accepting of those valuations then, but not now. Why? Because the price has dropped, forcing us to look realistically at the stock price and what we were prepared to pay for it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're not prepared to pay much for it at the moment. $5 are compared to $14. So just be careful. Some of those stocks really can decimate you and we do not want to be in a stock that falls like this. And you simply do that by having a stop loss or stop profit. Let's go to Domino's, another good example. This is a real high flyer that we all know, all know and love, maybe. We'd love it if we made a lot of money on it. Um, 
and we don't love it if we lost a lot of money on it. Now, we would not have lost any money on this one because this is a huge trend. In fact, up here, a bit like uh, Temple and Webster, we were talking about some very exciting uh, events happening at Domino's. Um, and it was all going ahead, gangbusters here, rally, rally, big three, four weeks up. Then it starts to turn, correction maybe, we don't really know at this stage, we're not too pushy. we haven't seen this, what's happened here. But this is where our stop is up here, up about 141, 42, 15, 10, 15% off these highs here. So, once it goes there, we are out. Again, here we can go down, we can go sideways or we can go up. Okay, so in this instance here, we've gone down. And we don't want to be in it because this is where your portfolios get decimated by holding a stock that goes down 56% from its highs. Okay, no need for it. Just have a stop in place and we'll work pretty well any strategy a stop is needed. Okay, because we just don't know. We think we know, but we don't. So lots of red bars here. Momentum totally just dis dis disappeared out of this one and the stock went off. So it really was time to get out of this stock and lock in your profit. Okay, and don't give back. So that's what I'm a bit about, just talking about those stops, using your head and being very careful, not trying to think you're smarter than the market because the market is smarter than you are. You just control what you can and make sure you do the right thing. Okay, mineral resources is another sort of the momentum and the stop sort of situation we've had. We know we've had one, two, three good momentum trades up here um, over the last couple of years. Sorry. Over the mineral resources over the last couple of years. We then we got stopped out up here at around $55. The stock came down to about $35. It's since rallied with no trend reversal there, so we've got no signal to rebuy this stock. If it made a new high, yes, we may well have gone with it. It didn't, it came back down, and it has been rotating wildly through these levels here, and we've got no signal, so we stay neutral on this stock at the moment because it can drop very quickly from $66 to $35 very quickly, so we've got to be very careful of that sort of thing. So. The probabilities are not on our side, so we just stay away from this stock at the moment. The interesting thing is we're probably all bullish on commodities and we think the, the resistance is going to break. Maybe you're right, but just think about the alternative. If it doesn't happen and the lows break, then you're going to see a worse, worse situation. So until your evidence is in place that it actually is going to go higher, then you, uh, you stay storm. Okay. Let's go on a brighter note, what happened uh, coal again, so I just want to talk a little bit about our strategy again. We've looked at this stock a couple of times recently. We've seen the nice trade that we did um, earlier this year, through, or through late last year, from May through to about November last year. We got out of that stock. It was only a short trade. Again, it doesn't look like much, but when we look at the results and we annualise it out, that's what we do. Now, in this instance here, we've got stopped out here at 255, so we took, this was our trade, our trade history, 23%, okay. Then we got stopped out, the stock turns around and goes straight back up again. Don't worry about it, it happens, okay. Don't, don't beat yourself up. It breaks up here and of course, it breaks up here and of course I'm a buyer the next uh, next week, the morning of the next week once I get a break. So I'm a buyer up here and we all go, ugh, it's too high to buy. Well, maybe it is, but I've got rules and I've got members that will tell me if I'm doing the wrong thing. So I've got to follow the rules. So in this instance here, we've bought it here. We're now up about 18%. We're probably up a little bit more today because the market's up a bit. But we're up 18% in 56 days. So we're getting a good unrealized return on that trade and we need to protect that. So my stop is in place and we'll make sure that we are going to protect that move. So it's a bit about how my strategy works. I'm not looking for long-term trends. I'm not looking to pick tops and bottoms. I'm just looking to take a chunk as quick as I can and the momentum moves are generally the quick ones that go by. Okay, Metcash, another trading strategy which we've looked at before, but I just want to talk to you a little bit about again. We, it actually looks like a nice trend that's going up through here. And why, why did I get out of it here? Well, it looks like there's bumps, you know, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. But here, it just went past my stop and I did get stopped out. So not knowing that it may, it may go down, sideways are up, I have to get out because that's the rules. And of course, this one did turn around and go straight back up again, like Whitehaven, okay? So I've got the Temples and Websters and the Dominoes that went down, and I've got these ones that go up, but the strategy works for both things, okay? Protecting your capital is the most important thing that I do. Okay, so we're now in Metcash again, we're back in positive territory, and we're hanging on for the right, and maybe this, this long-term, uh, prevailing trend will continue higher. But for the moment, we're along this one. And in fact, when you see this sort of trend on stock radar, you can in fact jump on any of these trends. If it has a valid trend intensity rating, we never know where they're gonna go. You know, the computer share stocks and those sorts of ones that just went through through the route to, to areas we never would have thought. So you can still jump on any trend if you want to, depending on how you want to do this. So that's, that's Metcash, that's how that looks. It's fantastic.
fantastic. Origin, again, this, one, this is just really a change in trend, uh, this one here, slow change in trend. Nobody really liked Origin here for a while. Downtrend ended around here. We started to get a switch, a higher low, a higher high, with a bit of volume and a bit of, bit of uh, momentum, and then we see the trend develop. So we look for the turn, the accumulation, and the switch point, which is the break above here. Sorry, the switch point, which is the... Uh, which is the break above here, so I've always been touchy with this mouse. Just get it in the right spot again. Okay, so the switch was here. That's the trend reversal, that's the breakout, and then we get the trend which develops here. Bit of a tough ride, but we hang on there because it does happen. But the trend has developed well. Trend intensity rating of 10. Who knows where origin will go, but this demand and this momentum is fantastic, so it looks fantastic. Okay, so this is the stocks I wanted to go through for you today. Just a few there. Be careful about the stops, use your head, but still run with those stocks like Origin when you get onto them because they're going to be great winners for you. And we need to make money in times like this sometimes, so it's a bit hard. So that's where we are with that one. Okay, now I go to trading tactics, which I wanted to talk a little bit about. Um, I've gone through all those ones. Okay, just reiterating on those stocks that I covered, there's a lot of excitement about a few stocks that I'm going to look at probably over the next week or two, being Horizon, Transurban, Amcor, Flight Centre, Webjet. Um, you can go to Stock Road and have a look at how I'm looking at those at the moment, but I'm going to look at those in the next couple of weeks because they're always those opportunities that are coming in, ones that are falling out, ones that are coming in. So we're always riding that cycle the best way we can, try to buy low and sell high is what we try and do. Plenty of stocks in the trading centre for you to analyse, and now I'm going to go through it for you to give you an idea of how it works. So the Stock Road Trading Centre, it has ratings, buy, sell, stops, reversals, and we're trying to concentrate on risk, being in control, having focus, and creating a market edge, which is all about what the trading centre is about. It's based on the trend and tend to Rating system forms the backbone of Stock Radar's trading centre. Okay, we've gone through all those components the last few weeks. I've created a playlist on YouTube so you can watch all these six uh, videos together. We're now culminating in number six, the trading centre down here on the 5th of May. Okay, whereas we know the trend intensity indicator drives the trend intensity rating system, it uses those four tools that we try to, to calculate the trend intensity indicator. Structured around the trend intensity rating system is the trading centre. Okay, and it's based on FOX that generate a benchmark. It generates a benchmark that highlights those stocks with compelling trending qualities. Okay, what do we see first when we go to the trading centre? You see the weekly buys and sells. So this is from a couple of weeks ago. Aurora, Viva Energy came in. There were no sells that week. That's it for the week. Which ones are you buying? Which ones are you selling? <coughs> okay, then I go down below that and I've got the stock radar portfolio. This shows me all the stocks that I'm currently holding organised by trend intensity rating. So you'll hear me refer to the stock radar portfolio. This is it. All the qualified stocks within, trend ten within the trading centre. So you can see they're all rated. So you can see Ampol at the top, um, Atlas Arteria, all the way down to Waypoint at the end there. Okay, So they're all rated. All the stocks that I hold are rated. Uh, and you can see there's a little chart here so you can get a little chart if you want to have a look at the chart as well. Okay, then we go down below that and I have what I call a map of the market. And this shows me everything that I hold in the market. It shows me all the sectors that I have. Okay, all listed down the left down here. The trend intensity rating of each sector. Okay, purely for organisational purposes, not really for top down. I still like to buy stocks in bad sectors. Okay, so this is really for organisational purposes. These are all the stocks that I cover and these are all the stocks that I hold. Now these stocks here, are going to be all these stocks in the stock radar portfolio. Okay, this is just representing it a different way, so you can see the market in a snapshot. I.e., sectors, trend intensity rating, stocks covered, and stocks held. So organised by sectors. Okay, then we go down below the sectors, and you can see in here, you can see in this sector here, so the com com consumer commercial services sector. These are all the stocks that I cover, and these are the stocks that I held. So if I go down to that sector, you can see this sector here. These are all the stocks that we cover, and these are the stocks that we hold. Okay, so the trend intensity, the trading centre page shows you, goes right down to the individual stocks, sector by sector, mining sector, transport, telecoms, 
This is my consumer commercial services sector. It rates each stock based on the trend intensity rating, which is at the top. CTD, plan away at the top of 10. CPU, NSR, 9, 8. Then you go down to here. These are all qualified stock picks that say yes. Anything grey or red is not a qualified stock pick. So there's a yes or no situation here. Very quickly, I can look at NXT. It rates a minus 7. I do not want to trade that because there's no trend there. Okay. So it rates each stock based on the trend intensity rating. The rating quickly tells you this. this quickly tells you the status of a stock. As I said before, a minus seven is not a good look on a price behavior. It shows you, sorry, uptrends and downtrends. So I can see very quickly the greens are the uptrends and the greys and the reds are the downtrends, and it organizes the stocks, okay? So we can just go through, yes, it's a stock pick, no, it's not. Entry date, entry price, exit date, exit price. Current price, this here is my stop levels for current stock picks, and these are reversal levels. So I need next to go above 13.92 to reverse. And that's a long way away because it's the old highs, but that's what I need to do. I might lower that if a trend reversal occurs at a lower level. But this is the structure of what it is, and this is the, like, this is the lifeblood of, tra of the trading centre. These are the figures that you need to know. Each week, I'm looking at where that stop is and whether I'm going to execute it on Monday or not. So this breaks down everything for you uh, into trending and trend ratings on all stocks. And you can very quickly see what they are. And I also have a portfolio watch list called your portfolio, which you can put all your own stocks here, build your own little trading centre within Stock Radar. So there you go, take a trial, see if you can build it up yourself, and that's how it works. Okay, so the trading centre is updated weekly. Remember, I'm a weekly data, I very rarely look at any daily data, I don't even I don't take any signals from daily data. It's noise. Daily daily stuff is noise, weekly gives you a much better trend. And most of my clients run their own super funds or are good traders and they tend to uh, look for trends um, in the markets and weekly is very good for that. So it's updated weekly before the market on Monday. Uh, it provides clear, precise and simple format for easy and fast analysis and decision making, which is really what uh, you need to do. Okay, so that's really what the trading centre is all about. Okay, so if you've got any questions, you can always give me a call, take a trial, have a look at it, but it's all there for you to, um, to lap up and enjoy. Okay, so to finish off, stocks move in amazing ways of rhythms and emotions, okay? Things like uptrends, they're, they're, they start tentatively, they're very fragile, they build confidence, they go higher, then they get to an overconfident and greedy stage. So that's how you look at that sort of, um, the, the wave of an uptrend. A topping pattern is when the, when the wave is starting to subside, you know, the smart money is selling to the to stale retail buyers, and it's a distribution pattern. And then you get a downtrend pattern, which is, which, is, which, is, which is characterized by uncertainty, lack of confidence, and it ends in fear and capitulation. And when that sort of stuff happens in there, we're ready to look for a trend reversal so look for something that we can actually buy that, but uh, have a reason to buy that stock, like we did in COVID, where we recovered a lot of money that we'd lost in COVID. Stops going off as we bought down the low. We've got some good signals to buy there. Okay, so that's sort of the ways and emotions that the, you know, the market goes through, and we're trying to tap into that all the time. The trend intensity rating system forms the cornerstone of stock radar's analysis process and catches these rhythms, rhythms based on price movement. The trend intensity will guide you as to where we are in the stock cycle for each stock. The trend intensity rating often moves from one extreme of plus 10 right down to minus 10 following the stock cycle. Maybe not to the complete peak, but that's the way it tends to move, okay? So um, Trading Center then presents this information in an easy to read and analyze format, helping you to make informed and smarter decisions, okay? Done all the work for you. Stock Radar offers a simple, straightforward weekly process for you to follow. Not every day, drive you nuts, give you stress, weekly relax, confident, give you time to focus, okay? So really remember the stock market is a very, very simple place if we let it be. If you want to complicate it and over analyze it, we can do that, but we don't need to do that. It's a very, very simple place. Okay, stay safe, watch your trends, heed your stops, and I'll see you next week. Thanks.